In this video, I'm going to talk about the common question, when should I have surgery for lower back pain? And this is a real difficult question. You get different people from different places in the world that have different approaches and different uh, attraction towards surgery. Some people will come into our clinic and say, do you know if I have to have surgery, I'm ready to do it straight away. But you think, whoa, you haven't even got that bad a problem. You don't need to have surgery. Other people are very much against it and they have really, really bad spines. They've got some major damage in their lower back uh, and, and really, it's difficult to provide them with much uh, in the way of long-lasting stability without them being reliant on some element of treatment and ongoing um, sort of therapeutic intervention. Uh, in terms of the lower back, when should you have it for? For sure, if you've got any sort of red flag symptoms, if you lose control of your bladder, your bowels, if you're getting what's called saddle anesthesia, which is where huh, where this area, the area of your body that would be in contact with the saddle. Uh, becomes uh, numb, you don't have control over that region, then you really need to get to A&E reasonably swiftly. But we don't tend to see those sorts of patients generally because they do call the ambulance and go, oh my gosh, what is happening to me? And you probably, I hope you wouldn't be watching this video if you had any of that. So what if you're not suffering from red flags, when should you realistically consider surgery? Well, the first thing you want to know and we advise patients if they are considering it is talk to your surgeon. Don't talk to your GP, don't talk to other people. Speak to your surgeon, ask him how he can help you or she can help you because they're the ones that are doing the procedure day in day out they know the results they know what they're doing and they know whether you're a candidate for it and one thing we do find especially in this country maybe not others but there does seem to be a growing tendency of surgeons not to want to do surgery which is always pleasant to hear and they'll try their very best in most cases to direct you to other means and methods to provide relief for the problem before going down the surgical route. So do bear that in mind, sometimes it is worth having that conversation, or in most cases it is worth having the conversation, if you've tried lots of things, and that brings me to the next point. If you've got some lower back pain, or recurrent lower back pain, and all you've done is painkillers and a little bit of exercise, then go and see someone who can actually treat you. A lot of patients come in and they say, oh well I've been doing using drugs, uh, painkillers for the last six months and I did some exercises at home and my back hasn't worked, it hasn't gone any better. Well of course it hasn't, you haven't had any treatment on the lower back. If there's some damage down here in this lumbar region, you've got a slip disc, you've got some arthritic change etc and you've had no one really look at your back and give you a thorough understanding of the alignment of this spine. Does it have the normal lordosis? Are you leaning off to one side? Do you have any leg length problems? If no one's taking the time to go through that, I'd really sort of cross that box or, or tick that box before you go down the line of surgery. And if actually, do you know what? You have a normal lumbar spine, a perfectly normal lumbar spine. Your legs are perfectly level. You've got good muscular support. You're not overweight. You take care of yourself and exercise and, and are regularly active. You have a good lifestyle. You don't uh, spend too long at the desk and you still have back pain that is severe and, and debilitating, then you might want to go ahead and, and consider the surgical intervention and speak to that surgeon and say, what are they going to do? What is the purpose of it? Are they addressing some of the challenges that your spine faces on a daily basis? And how are they accounting for those? And are they putting emphasis on rehabilitation after the surgical procedure? What's the amount of time you're gonna be out? Are your muscles going to suffer as a consequence and, and waste away because you're going to be have a long recovery period? All of these questions you need to ask. But first and foremost, we always say to patients, try your best to pursue treatment that is non-surgical first. And that is probably our biggest bit of advice for patients that are looking for potential surgical routes for their back pain. Is it right for you? Follow the, the, those uh, few steps and I'm sure you'll be able to get to the right answer that gives you the best possible prognosis and gets you better uh, in the right way for you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. Now, if you want any more of our videos, then click here. We've got a nice one on our Back in Shape program. Up here, you can look at some of our recently uploaded videos. And remember, click up the top above my head for the link to subscribe and do that so you don't miss out on anything in the future.